Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So in this uh, video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the new calculus derivative definition and show you why it is solid and reliable. Okay, so the new calculus definition says this. Now, it's a finite difference. It's got nothing to do with uh, what that idiot Jack Hazinger thought of as Professor Jack Hazinger, an ex-Harvard alumnus, thought of as uh, a central difference. Nothing to do with that. So M and N, <clears throat> if you have a curve like this, okay, and you've got a point X here, then M is horizontal distance from X to this point here, and N, and N, actually this is X plus N and X minus M, okay? So X minus M here, and X plus N here, and a tangent line right over there. So these have a relationship, M and, and N have a relationship with X. You cannot, like you do in your bogus limit calculus, choose M and N as you please, right? Can't do that. They have a relationship, right? So this is how you find the relationship. When you simplify this expression, it, you're going to end up with something like this. Okay? <laughs> That's X, M, and N. <clears throat> you can write it that way, or you can simply ignore this term because it's always zero, right? So... My enemies in the mainstream have always tried to say that uh, the, the difference between this derivative definition and the mainstream is that this doesn't allow for tangent lines at points of inflection. It doesn't. But because it's so solid, you can always set M and N equals to zero. doesn't matter. Why? Because you already have the derivative here. So if you want to... Uh, believe that there's a tangent line or half tangents, which there are, at points of inflection. So say there's a point of inflection. If you want to believe there are half tangents, you can set M and N equal to zero because this expression here is always equal to zero. And moreover, there is no secant line that has an MN pair, an MN pair that is equal to zero, zero. Okay, no secant line. Only the tangent line has that pair because this is the slope of the tangent line. Now, another vile little bastard called Mile Marcus Cliver and John P. M. tried to say that this was that what I wrote in the new calculus was something similar to what's written here. It's got nothing to do with the shit that you see written here on the fundamental excrement lemma. Because Nothing in this bullshit here talks about slopes. But if you look at my holy grail of calculus and you look at this free book, ebook that I publish here, you'll see that I talk about the slopes. And in fact, I relate, I provide you a new form of your fundamental calculus, okay? Uh, a new form for your fundamental theorem of calculus. This is the form that I gave you. I gave you this form. And I told you, and I told you, I, the great John Gabriel, told you that this here is the slope of the non-parallel secant line. This here is the slope of the tangent line. And this is the difference. There is nothing about that in here. And in fact, nothing about that anywhere else in the mainstream. It has never been stated as a theorem. Labar happened to recognize it. Uh, as part of one of his examples, but the idiot uh, continued with his drivel in limits. So he, he, he continued to talk about some crap called, uh, uh, no, I forget the name of it now, but it's a Lipschitz condition, Lipschitz condition. So that was another stupid, you know, who member of the chosen race. You know, I'm talking about not allowed to mention that, even though I am one of them, uh, because the video might be taken down. But he so Labar just continued with these shit and it didn't realize, if he had realized it, he would have been able to give you 
the holy grail of calculus, which is what you see over here. Okay. So it takes genius to recognize these people. I am a genius. I don't give a shit what you think about it or anybody else or even God. I would tell God to go fuck himself if he told me I was wrong. Because you know what? I know I'm right. Why would I admit that I'm wrong when I know I'm right? And why do they not honor me, the bastards of mainstream? Every single one of them. Why don't they honor me? Because A, they're pathologically jealous. They hate me. And they're insecure. I am an existential threat to the scum of mainstream mathematics academia. A complete existential threat. I, I, I have a bullshit detector that is uh, probably the most advanced in the Milky Way galaxy and several other galaxies around it. So they can't fool me. They can fool most of you. But that's why I'm here, to warn you and to show you these things. Now, not only is my derivative definition better than the bullshit mainstream definition, but so is also is my integral definition, okay? And you'll find all that in my free ebook. It's not that big. I mean, it's not that long, okay? So here I give you examples also with their mainstream of how the integral is really just a product of arithmetic means. And that's another thing that these evil people didn't acknowledge. You see, I gave them a general formula for area and volume. And, and what did they do in return? They didn't thank me. They called me uh, borderline personality. They called me... Uh, there was even some dumb psychologist from Texas who wrote uh, a diagnosis without even having ever spoken to me. You know, um, so a lot of libel has been posted on the internet about me. I was fired from two of the top public schools in the U.S. before I could even start on day one because of the bullshit that was said about me on the internet. And now you know what? They're one day going to be crawling in a hole because... They, they're going to realize they were wrong in doing that. And, and even if, you know, and even if they don't, I'm determined to make the truth known to young aspiring mathematicians. And I have made it known. And so anyway, <clears throat> I show you in my free book the mistakes they made, and I show you the correct way. Okay. And there is a new uh, publication that I made recently. So if you go to my academia site, it's called it's called the, the non-fictional origins of and history of calculus. So this is it here. And you want to you want to you may you want to not only download this, you want to make a copy of it. Okay. You want to make a copy of this book, a copy of my introduction to the new calculus. You also want to make a copy of the ultimate book of numbers. Okay, this book here. They're all very important books and they will guide you on the right path. So now, coming back to this example here, why can you just set m and n equal to zero here? Because this expression here is equal to zero. It's called an auxiliary equation. It relates x, m, and n, okay? So even though, you know, somebody might say, well, you didn't, you divided by, if you set them to zero, you divided by zero. No, I did not. Because in this format here, <laughs> I'm no longer dividing by zero because I've already separated the derivative from the difference. Remember, this is where I got the idea for fixing up your bullshit calculus, okay, with the Holy Grail. This is the Holy Grail for your bullshit calculus, okay? And it came, the idea came to me from new calculus, okay? But now, in your bullshit calculus, you can't really have this zero because... This is a secant non-parallel secant line slope, and it's never it's never equal to the tangent line slope. Okay, so and I don't give a shit when you say you're taking limits. You're not. You're still setting this expression to zero. It's the same thing. It's equivalent. Okay, and when you take when you say you're taking limits, you're using the limit value, which is let's say x is equal to c. You're using this in your bullshit epsilon delta definition. Okay. Let me explain that to you, morons. Not all of you are morons, but the majority of you are. So in your bullshit definition, you let's just decrease that. You have something like this, okay? Which is less than delta 
Oh, and another thing about this is that you have to pretend that if then means something else in mathematics, it doesn't. It only means one thing in mathematics. I'll explain that in a second. So the, uh, this means simply this, that you have uh, uh, yep, you have this over, over C and then minus L is less than epsilon. So over here this this l is equal is equal to f prime of c and when you used your first principle method where you neatly say lim f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h approaches zero you fucking moron and you say limit as h approaches zero you are using this this do you get it you imbecile bastards you're using this in its own definition you stupid morons okay in other words what you're doing is you're using the first principles method to guess your limit get it idiot and then to test your limit to see if it's okay if that's not circular i don't know what is it's a load of shit and then of course this little condition here means you need to be able to have a hole in your function but in reality, there is never a hole if there is a derivative there. Never. You can't give me one example where that is true, you fucking moron. And you've tried before and you failed, all of you. You're vile, reptile bastards for not acknowledging, not acknowledging, me my, not acknowledging my contributions and me as the greatest mathematician alive today. You need to do that. Until you do that, I'm going to take you apart. And you will eventually be ashamed of the things you said about me. Every single one of you, and I can list many names here, okay? David Aldridge, that, that scum from Oklahoma State University who first attacked me on Psy.Math. Jean-Pierre Massager, that piece of shit from France, okay? Um, I mean... I'm so worked up right Marcus Cliver, another one. Zelos Malum, another one. I mean, I'm so worked up right now, I can't remember all of them. But if I just relax, it doesn't even pay to mention their names. They're all scum. They're all evil, rotten, stupid, ignorant scum. They can't help it that they're stupid. And they want to remain in their ignorance. Well, look, I'm trying to get you out of the spider web that they are going to pull you into let you rot and then eat you alive or eat you dead or alive whether you whether you're still uh, alive or not is of no consequence to them they have secured their tenure of deception okay and they should know they do know better they do know better okay they should know better even if they don't i mean look I have given them overwhelming evidence, every single one of the scumbags, that they are wrong. Now, when somebody who is supposed to be an academic is given evidence, overwhelming evidence that they're wrong, they should admit it and change their ways. But they refuse. Why? Because this hasn't been published in one of their shit journals or it hasn't been blessed by that little frigging moron, Terry, Terrence Tao, who is a who's a nobody, even though he's won a field prize, it means absolutely nothing, okay? Because they, obviously, they're all going to award each other prizes. You have to be one of them to win either the field prize or the able prize. You can't be outside their fart echo chamber because they all love smelling each other's asses and their heads. Mainstream mathematics lecturers and teachers, their heads are up each other's asses and they love it that way, okay? So if somebody comes with a a nice, uh, fresh, fragrant smell, they can't stand that. It just knocks them out. And that's what I have done to them. I have actually shown them to be incompetent, ignorant, and incorrigibly stupid, not to mention uh, incomprehensibly intransigent, okay? They will not be corrected under any circumstances. So the, the other thing I was going to tell you is that in mathematics, this bullshit here, this logic crap that they teach you about, if then, it doesn't relate to mathematics, okay? In mathematics, 
if you if you say something like this, if A then B, it means that B can only be true if A is true, and if A is not true, B is not true. Okay, absolutely not true. And why do I say this? Well, I've got a brilliant video on that, and I suggest you look at it. It was pointed out to me recently by one of my subscribers, but it was called, let's see here, uh, if, let's see if I can find it, if, then, yeah, here it is. What does the if then mean in mathematics? So I'll post a link to this too, and you can see that even if you go there, and there's a part that I'd like to show you. Um, so let me just turn the sound down. Uh, I think it's, no, not there. So basically it says that, oh, no, 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 it's not this one. It's not this one. Or maybe this one, I don't know. Uh, okay, so... So, so let me give you a simple example. Let me give you a simple example how this works instead of wasting time with that. Let's clear again the canvas. Okay. So if you say if x is equal to 3, then x plus 2 equals 5, <laughs> there is no way this can ever be true unless this is true, okay? So if x is not 3, let's say x is 2, then this is also false, okay? Because 2 plus 2 is not 5. Do you get it, idiot? So if then has nothing to do with Boolean logic. It has nothing to do with logic as a subject. Logic as a subject is not mathematics. Set theory is not mathematics. Both those uh, uh, courses of study or research are not mathematics regardless of how much mainstream mathematics academics, they call themselves mathematics academics, but they're actually morons, want those things to be part of mathematics. They're not. They never were, and they never will be. And thank the gods that the, the ancient Greeks didn't subscribe to those Jewish mythologies, because if they did, you wouldn't even know how to add and subtract fractions today, you morons. Okay, and if the Greeks thought that zero was a number, you wouldn't know how to add or subtract subtract fractions. You'd still be in your damn ignorance. And even now, you don't understand why when you do that, it works. That's why you, you need to lo download uh, or become a subscriber to my uh, academia site. And I reveal all these things, okay? I tell you all the truth, undiluted. I don't give a fuck what any mainstream academic thing because I piss and shit on them. They're all inferior intellect to me. I tell you exactly what it is. That's something that they will not do. Okay, there are cowards, by the way. Very few of them will stand up and be counted and say that I deserve to be respected. One has already, and I, I don't know how well that's going to work out for him. He'll probably end up deleting his comments on my YouTube, from from what I know, because somebody's going to threaten him, and somebody already has. The scumbag Jean Pierre Massarger from France has already threatened uh, one of the people who, one of the lecturers who posted a comment like that. So they're afraid, they're cowards, they're uh, uh, not going to speak out anytime soon because they'll lose their jobs. And the Church of Academia is very powerful. But I'm even more powerful because I'm not under their authority. Okay, You, in some sense, are because you have to get a degree. I mean, it's just one of those unfortunate things that if you want to be uh, recognized in this world today, you have to have a piece of paper which is not soft enough to wipe your ass on. And you have to get it from the high, you know, the high priests in academia. So there is another video also on this, and I'll try to find it, and I'll put it in the details section. My name is John Gabriel. Until next time, goodbye.